Okay, let's move on to our next subject, which is special constructions. There's three types of special construction. An ordinary beast line. Um, a constrained beast line. I'll put in point constrained beast line. And a beast line cell. So let's look at examples of those. The ordinary beast line is one of these here and we have lots of op different options on how to create it. True points, enter data points, etc. So let's draw one out here. And that becomes a locked element as if we had applied the constant constraint to it. I'm going to add a vertical line, a vertical construction, and constrain a point at the intersection. And even though this doesn't look like a construction and it never takes on the, the symbology, the yellow dashed line of the symbology of a construction, it still work, will work as a special construction. So let's constrain that point at the intersection. And now as I modify and resolve, you can see the point will always remain at the intersection. Notice that I can't modify and resolve the B spline. Let's move on to the second point, um, point constraint B spline. We create this using the sketch tool. This one down here. And the last option on the segment toolbox. Let's do something similar again. And now I can modify and resolve the points on that beast line. However, one thing to notice here, If I try to perform the same exercise as I did with the with the first baseline, constraining a point at the intersection, it won't work. Or even if I try to, let's say, constrain this point, constrain a particular point at the intersection, it's not going to work. We could make that point snap to an intersection. Let's do that. I'll take this one over here. So make the point on the B spline snap to the intersection of the two line constraints. And that has now worked. And now we can control the B spline using the points, using the lines, say the X and Y position of that point on the B spline. And the final type is a B spline cell. Let's do a closed B spline curve here. And I'm going to turn that into a cell. Things. Create these by cell. I'm just going to delete those elements and place the cell. Now, what this allows me to do is a combination of the first type of baseline. So I can I can constrain a point on it. Let's just do that.
and that point remains on the cell. I'll just fix it just for illustration's point. It hasn't snapped to it yet, but um, it will once it becomes part of a solving solution. Let's um, let's move it around now. You can see it's remaining on the outside. Another thing advantage this brings us to is a combination of, of that one and it's a combination of an ellipse say. We have a center point which we can constrain to the center of a circle for example. Let's make them coincident. And just resolve that just to to illustrate it. And it also has a direction, so we can constrain the direction of this B spline cell. Now, as I modify and resolve that point on, you'll be able to see how it moves around the, the B spline cell. So it has, it allows the advantage of this type B spline, plus it allows a point constraint and a directional constraint. We can also create tangents to the B spline. And since it works like an ellipse, we can make elements parallel or perpendicular. Let's go for per um, perpendicular. Okay, so it's a very versatile type of um, constraint if you want to check it out. So that's special constructions, B-spline, point constrained B-spline and B-spline cell.